welcome to my February roundup video. I am Helen, I am the host of the Giddy Knits podcast here on this channel and um, the this video <laughs> is what I'm calling my monthly roundup videos. We are a bit late with February's but unfortunately Covid hit my household in February and everything is now a bit late. Um, so but I still wanted to sit down and record a video and I still wanted to get a monthly roundup video out there. Um, so yeah, I hope you'll forgive the lateness of this video. So what is my monthly roundup video? What does it entail? So we'll start off with um, a little chat about finished objects, uh, which knitting and crafting projects I finished during February. We will then have a little check-in with the goals that I set myself in February and how I did towards um, achieving those. We will then set some March goals for March, obviously. Um, some goals for going into March. Um, and then I'm also going to finish off at the end with a book section um, because I've been enjoying sharing that with you. So I will also talk about what books I read and finished during February. Um, so yeah. I think we'll just get straight into it. <laughs> so I finished three projects during February and they were all vanilla socks. Vanilla socks seem to be a bit of a comfort knit for me at the moment. I'm really enjoying just having mindless um, knitting, mindless knitting projects and um, vanilla socks seem to really be fitting that bill. But I finished my um, Christmas socks um, so these were socks that I cast on on Christmas Day. Um, again, if my camera would focus, there we go. These are socks that I cast on on Christmas Day um, as a little bit of a kind of a Christmas cast on ritual, which is always very nice. Um, and I knit them using my um, Christmas Day Chaos colourway, which is a colourway that I originally dyed for Giddy Yarns way back in oh gosh, 2017 possibly, when I first opened my business. Um, and it's been sat in my stash ever since and it's so nice to finally have it knit up as a pair of socks. Um, there is a pair, the other one is just there. They are just simple vanilla socks and they should fit me, or they do fit me, um, and they will be popped away. As with all of my finished socks in my box, ready to be brought out in December, um, when I give myself the gift of a box of fresh hand knit socks um, which hopefully this year there will be a few whereas last year there were only five pairs but hopefully this year there will be more than that. <laughs> um, so yeah, pair finished object number one for February was um, my Christmas socks. I then finished another sock. This is a, a singular sock but then it's only meant to be a singular sock um, and that is because I finished Tom's um, socks. So um, if you're a regular viewer of the podcast you will know that um, throughout the year I am dyeing up a colourway each month um, inspired by um, a, an app that produces um, digital art based on keywords. Um, and each month I am dyeing up a colourway and I'm stealing one of those colourways for myself and I am knitting Tom a sock. My husband only wears odd socks and therefore I am knitting him 12 odd socks this year and um, yeah, which is great because it means I only have to knit one sock and it's a finished object. Um, so this was the January, uh, January colourway um, and I've put it into a sock. Um, I just did a German short row heel but I've used the umbrella toe uh, which is from the umbrella sock pattern by um, Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears um, and again I've talked about this on the podcast but I basically picked this toe because I had it for 72 stitches whereas my normal toe I don't have for 72 stitches and it was easier. So yeah, they don't quite fit on the sock blockers as you can tell, but that's because these sock blockers are designed for my size feet and not my husband's size feet. So yeah, a second pair of socks that got finished. Well, a second sock. Um, and then I also finished a second pair of socks for me. Um, so these are my poinsettia socks. They are a pair of little shorty socks, and as I said, they are a pair, so we do have we do have the other one just there. Um, they are a pair of shorty socks, and I knit these out of my poinsettia self-striping colourway. 
um, which I'm really, really pleased with. I love this colourway. It's so different, but I don't know what it is. I just love it. I was very lucky to not run out of yarn because I made the stupid mistake of not putting in a contrasting toe or cuff. And I had a 70 gram sock set. Um, and uh, yeah, I was very, very lucky, I have to say. Did not have a lot of yarn left at the end. Um, I did put in a contrasting heel, but really I should have put in a contrast toe um, to really make the most of that yarn. But um, it's fine, I got lucky and I managed to get a pair. And they are, these are matching. Um, so if you can see, I have got the stripes, the stripes matching, um, which is always nice. Um, I tend to do that with, I tend to do that with, well, I vary actually, to be completely honest, I vary. Sometimes I match, sometimes I don't. And actually, um, one of the other reasons why I was quite, um, tight with the yarn is because I matched from a 70 gram sock set, I often find that if I'm using a 70 gram sock set of self-striping, I either need to knit um, quite a short leg or I need to not worry about matching my socks because obviously to match, you have to wind off some of it and you waste some of the yarn in that process. But I managed it. I managed to get a pair of socks out of this without having to, <laughs> without, without having to have a random bit at the end of the toe that didn't match anything. But yeah, that is it. That is all I finished in February. I mean, February is a short month. And as I said, we've had um, a, a more complicated February than, than would normally occur. <laughs> um, so I feel like I could have finished some bigger projects and I would have liked to have finished some bigger projects. But at the same time, I'm quite happy with having finished a couple of pairs of socks and having got a few a few things off the needles even if they weren't some of the bigger projects that I could really do with getting finished um so in terms of um how I did with my February goals let's have a little look so I made a note of all the goals that I set myself in February so I wanted to finish my advent wrap I haven't finished my advent wrap I do have it just here um, I've made some progress on it. I don't know quite how much progress I've made during February because I haven't put a marker in to show the beginning, like where I was at the beginning of the month. Um, but I do only have five colours left now. Um, so it's getting there. It's getting there. Um, this is the Cupid's Arrow Wrap, which is a pattern by Ellie of Craft House Magic. Um, and I'm using um, an advent calendar from Spectrum Fibres from 2020. Um, so yeah, I have five colours left, but it's not finished. Um, but as I said, with these goals are more... Yarn everywhere. Um, these goals are more about motivating me to work on things rather than um, putting me down for not completing them, if that makes sense. So I have added to this because it's been part of my goals, even if I haven't actually finished it. Um, but yeah. So that's that one. What else? My gnome. I wanted to finish my gnome. I haven't finished my gnome, but I do have much more of a gnome than I had before. Um, so I think I had all I had done so far was the little rucksack bits and I'd started the hat. But I do now have a body of a gnome. Um, so once you get to this stage, it tends to be quite quick to get them finished off. Um, and the complicated bits are over. Well, the fiddly bits are still to come. Like I now have to knit a beard and a nose and whatever other little bits and pieces are supposed to come with this gnome. Um, but the the stuffing of the body and all of that kind of bit is now done. So again, progress has been made because I put it on my goals, um, but it's not finished. My Yuletide socks, I haven't even brought them over. I have added very little to my Yuletide socks. Um, Basically, whenever I've sat down and picked up a pair of socks this month, I've really wanted something mindless that I could I could knit while um, reading my book or something like that. So I've reached for the vanilla socks every time rather than the lace pattern that I need to, com need to concentrate on. So they really haven't made much progress at all. Um, the other thing was on there was Tom's sock, which I did complete. So that is the first tick of our goals for February, I completed Tom's sock. I wanted to get a colour therapy block finished this month as well, which I didn't manage, but 
but I have got two thirds of a colour therapy blanket block. That's hard to say. Colour therapy blanket block knit. Um, I have got two thirds of one knit. So that's not horrendous progress. And it did mean that I actually picked this up quite regularly. Um, so we will keep plugging away on the colour therapy blanket and um, hopefully eventually we will see progress. And then the final thing I set myself as a goal in February was that I wanted to start a new bobbin um, with my spinning. And that I did. Um, so I have an electric eel nano e-spinner which is what this is. Um, you can see the little, I don't know, it's not gonna focus. There we go, um, an electric eel. So this is a little e-spinner. Um, you plug it in and turn it on and it spins and yeah, there we go. Um, so as I'd said before, I um, had a little stumbling block because I needed to start a new bobbin and I couldn't quite remember how to do that. Um, so it was a case of finding time to sit down and look up how I start the new bobbin again and get it started, um, which I have done. So as you can see, I have started, come on camera, gonna focus, because it's very pretty. There we go. Um, I have started the next bobbin. Um, so yeah, that was what I wanted to do. I didn't say I wanted to finish it. I didn't say I wanted to spin a whole bobbin. I just said I wanted to start the next bobbin. So that to me is a tick in the goals. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at with February goals. Not as much as I would have liked, not as much progress as I would have liked. Um, so, but then I also need to take into account that I was away for a week of February because I went and helped my friend Jem who was vending at Unravel and then I got back and the family got hit with Covid so we had basically two weeks of that and I've had a lot of chaos kind of catching up with work from having all of that going on during February as well so knitting time has been not as much as I would have liked but yeah not too bad, not too bad. So the next thing is to set some goals for March. I need to be sensible, that is the big thing. I am vending at a yarn show at the end of March and obviously because of um, February being how February was, I'm a little bit behind with my prep for that yarn show, um, which means that knitting time again is gonna be at a little bit of a minimum. Um, so I need to be sensible. So I have only set myself four goals for March. The first goal is to hopefully finish my armour sweater and I want this as a sample at the yarn show so really it could do with being finished. Um, so this is the armour sweater which is a pattern by Maddie Harvey, um, it's a DK weight um, sweater pattern, it's like a cropped sweater and I'm probably going to do it with short sleeves um, and I have split for the sleeves and I am working down the body so it is now on simple round mindless just knitting um, so hopefully I need I should be able to get this done this needs to become my focus um, and as a result of that I've not put my advent wrap on my goals for this month because um, I can't I need this to be my big focus really the other thing that I've put on there is Tom's sock again. So I'm currently working on his February colour of the month sock. Um, so this is on the goal to finish. And I mean, I'm only, I'm 30, 30 rows away from the toe. Um, so I, that is a very achievable goal. Um, in fact, hopefully I will get that finished this week, really. Um, I'm reaching for this quite a lot because it's really nice and simple, mindless knitting at the moment. Um, so hopefully that is something that will get finished relatively easily during March and be a nice thing to tick off in the next monthly roundup video. Um, I've then got two other things. So I want to get a um, sample knit up of the Beatrix Potter Club for February so that I've got that, so that when I list the spares, probably at the beginning of April, um, when I list the spares online, um, I will have a nice sample to show how the colourway knits up. Um, I'm just going to be knitting shorty socks for me. In fact, look away now if you don't want to see the January one. Um, but 
I knit a little shorty sock like this out of the January Club and that's what I'm going to do out of the February Club. Um, you can look back now. <laughs> um, I'm not going to show the colourway for February because they've only just shipped out and I know that there are people who will not have received them yet. Um, but that is my plan for that. So that should be a relatively quick and easy thing to work on um, and to get done. And then finally, I am putting the colour therapy blanket back on the um, back on the goals for March because realistically I should be able to get this finished um, during March even with everything else that I need to get done um, and again this is quite a nice mindless relaxing knit so I've got the next three colours are in here Ooh, rattling rattling um, so the next three colours are in here at the top there um, ready to get this block finished off um, so yeah that's it they are my four goals for March is to get my armor sweater finished which is a big goal a big project but I am well down the body it's a cropped sweater and I'm going to do short sleeves um, so a bit of focus and a few good evenings work and I should get some significant progress on that Tom sock relatively simple goal um, the sample sock, again, hopefully a relatively simple goal, and the colour therapy block, a he relatively simple goal, hopefully, hopefully. Um, as I said, March is a very chaotic month, I've got a lot of work to get done, and I need to set simple goals, really. Yeah. So that is all the knitting side of the roundup. Um, I'm, I know in the last episode I talked about kind of other projects, but... I haven't really worked on a lot. I've added a little bit to my cross stitch just this weekend. And as you've seen, um, I've started a little bit more of my spinning, but I haven't made any significant progress on that. So I will share that for a future roundup when I've actually done a bit more on them. Um, but I did want to talk about books that I've read. Um, because I enjoy talking about it. And it's something a bit different to what else I talk about on my channel normally. Um, so I, as I said before, I set myself a goal of reading 20 books in um, 2022, um, in this year. And in January, I read six books. Um, and in February, I have read five books, um, which is not bad at all. I had a couple of long car, long train journeys um, where I got quite a lot of reading done. And then during everyone being poorly, I, I also um, had lots of time to kind of just sit and read and not really feel up to doing much else. Um, so I, yeah, I've read five books. I will pop up a picture on the screen next to me so you can see the covers of the books because I always quite like that. Um, so the first book I finished is um, The Last Graduate, which is book two of three of the Scholomance trilogy by Naomi Mo Novik. And uh, you'll remember if you watched the January video that I read the first book um, in this series, which his name is completely uh, A Deadly Education. <laughs> Um, the first book in the series, A Deadly Education, and this is the second book in the series. Um, and again, I really enjoyed it. It's very much a YA fantasy kind of novel, um, but it's really fun. And I said before, with the first one, um, if you're coming off, if you're coming to it off the back of Uprooted by um, Naomi Novik, um, you will find this very very different the writing style is very different and I think it could be quite a divisive um, writing style I think there's quite a lot of people who will come to it and be put off by it um, but once I'd kind of got used to it I really enjoyed the book I love the story and I have already pre-ordered the third book which is out later this year because I just want to know what happens <laughs> I really I re did really enjoy it um, if I, I would say as well if you've read these ones and not gelled with them particularly well, and it's put you off reading anything else by Naomi Novik, I'd say give up Rooted a try, because it's very different. It's much more grown up, um, and yeah, it's, it's a very different book. Um, I think the two styles between this and the other one, it, they're basically different authors. Um, so that was the first book that I read in February. 
Um, the second book I read was The Rose Code by Kate Quinn and I read um, The Alice Network last year which was also a book by Kate Quinn and I said before that I love anything that is set in um, World War One, World War Two, that kind of any of that kind of era. We didn't study a lot of um, World War One or World War Two history at school. I did quite a lot of other histories like we did quite a lot on the American West and the history of medicine and um, sort of all of the the Protestant Catholic Irish kind of stuff which considering we were in England was quite interesting I'm not quite sure anyway but <laughs> we didn't really study a lot of English history and a lot of kind of like the, the World War stuff just didn't really factor that heavily in my in my history education which is very strange um but yeah so it's something that I'm always drawn to I um, I love anything about World War Two or World War One, and the Rose Code is basically it um, features it follows the stories of three women during World War Two who um, go to work at Bletchley Park and they do different things so you've got um, one of them becomes a translator one of them works with the big bomb machines which are the ones that are used to kind of help translate the secret codes and then one of them works as a code breaker actually kind of cracking the codes um and it's really i really enjoyed it um it's i love books that will give you um, a women's view of the world wars as well because i always feel like we forget that you know the women were left at home but things changed for women a lot during world war ii um and it i just like seeing kind of what what they did <laughs> basically i don't know quite how to explain it um but yeah i thoroughly enjoyed it it was a really really good book um there was lots of there was a little bit of romance here and there but it wasn't a romance book and um it followed these women and it was it was really enjoyable and um like with the alice network i would definitely read more by kate quinn um i really enjoyed it then the third book that i read was verity by Colleen Hoover. Now I've never read any Colleen Hoover books before and I came to this one because I kept seeing it come up on Instagram and a number of people have read it and um, I get the impression that um, she mainly writes romance novels and this is her first kind of foray into thriller um, and that was quite clear. Um, I have nothing against smut in books at all i quite enjoy a good smart book you know no problems at all but this just i don't know a lot of it just felt wrong um i really did not enjoy this book <laughs> i um and again this is all my opinion obviously i know that there will be people out there who have thoroughly enjoyed it and really really got on with it well and there she is clearly a very popular author as well um so this is just obviously one person's opinion um but i don't know what it was it just it felt like so basically the story follows um i'm trying not to give you too, any spoilers but the story follows and i've forgotten the names of most of the characters already um but the story follows um a young author who is employed to write the um, final books in a series by another author verity who has been in a um an accident and is no longer able to write her books and as part of that she goes to their family home and she lives with them for a while while she goes through Verity's office and tries to come up with um, the outlines and everything for the next books in the trilogy, in the series. Um, and while she's in the office, she stumbles across um, what, she stumbles across an autobiography, um, which is written by Verity, and it is horrendous. <laughs> Um, and she starts to read this autobiography and one of the things that I did quite like was that you got um, chapters where you were um, following um, the, the author living in the house and sort of the, the experiences she was having with the family and everything like that and then you got chapters which were the autobiography and I quite liked that kind of setup. Um, it there were quite a lot of um, dark and shocking things in the autobiography and in the book in general and I, I'm not easily shocked, I'm not easily put off books in any way by that 
Um, but some of the things in this autobiography as a mother were um, quite hard to read. Um, so I would say bear that in mind if you try this book. There are quite a lot of things to do with um, pregnancy and um, things to do with kind of motherhood which are quite shocking and quite hard to read as a parent. Um, and then it just threw like it threw sex scenes in. <laughs> so the autobiography would quite randomly every so often have quite a, a detailed sex scene in it and then the, she start the, the 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 husband and the girl start having sex and it yeah it they just felt like they were very much thrown in I don't even know how to explain it but yeah I didn't get on very well with this book and I don't think I'll be reading anything more by the author um but that happens sometimes doesn't it um and I've been very lucky with all the books I've read so far this year because I've enjoyed them all but sometimes but I did still finish it I did still want to know what happened and I did still finish it um and I won't say what happened because I don't want to give you spoilers if you decide to read it yourself um and you may you may thoroughly enjoy it <laughs> but it was not it was not a book for me um and then the fourth book that I read in February was um Rock Paper Scissors by Alex Feeney and again this was another thriller and I did enjoy this one um you know I wouldn't give it five stars or anything um but it was it was very enjoyable and um again I really liked the way um, you've got a real mix. So basically, um, you're following a couple, and again, I'm trying so hard to explain this without giving you spoilers. You're following a couple, a husband and wife, and um, they've travelled to the Scottish Highlands to try and spend a weekend together to sort out their marriage. Their marriage is struggling. And when they turn up at this um, Airbnb kind of place in the Highlands, it's not what they were expecting, and things happen while they're there um that slowly unravel and um yeah um but the story is told you get chapters from the husband's point of view you get chapters from the wife's point of view and then you also get um letters that the wife wrote to the husband um on their wedding anniversary every single year um so you're getting quite an interesting mix of kind of their stories and what's happened and um, from the different perspectives um, and the way it kind of unfolds and the way you learn more about them as a couple and you learn more about their marriage and things like that um, is really interesting. Um, it's also got quite an interesting little um, thing in that the husband has um, a condition called, I'm going to say it wrong now, prosopagnosia I think is the one. Um, basically he doesn't have the ability to recognise faces and he also doesn't have the ability to recognise emotions in faces either. Um, it's like a neurological um, disorder um, and that I thought that was dealt quite well with and that was quite interesting in the way that that affected the story as well. Um, so yeah I really enjoyed that book, it was interesting, it kept me reading and um, I would recommend it definitely, it it had lots of nice twists and turns and it definitely kept you guessing um, and I really liked the way the story was told. And then the final book that I read in February which is definitely my standout book for the month was The Nightingale by Kristin Hanna and boy this book is still just yeah it's still just there. <laughs> um, this follows two sisters during World War II, um, two French sisters living in France um, and it's kind of the story of the the way their lives um, progressed throughout World War II in France um, and you've got um, Vianne, I think, my name, I'm rubbish with names, who is a mother and she stays in the town that um, they grew up in. Her husband goes off to war and leaves her behind and she ends up with a German billeted in her house um, and kind of the impact that that has on her life throughout the war. Um, and then you've got um, Isabel who is young and she's outspoken and she um, is determined to do whatever she can to 
um, help with the war and um, she ends up kind of she ends up kind of joining the resistance as such um, and it it really follow it follows the kind of the difference that their lives took so it doesn't pull any punches um, and it really faces the atrocities of um, what happened in France during World War II to the point where sometimes it feels a little bit overblown it feels a little bit like they're really just trying to give you everything negative everything bad that happened um, but at the same time it's very well told and it it really did draw me in and it was like I just could not put it down I just kept reading and um at times it was really dark at times there were tears um there were moments where you know there were bits of history that I knew about and I could see it coming um and things like that but it was it was absolutely incredible um and um, so Isabel goes to Paris, so there's a lot of stuff about kind of the Nazi occupation of Paris and um, the effect that that had on the people living in Paris and there's a lot to do with kind of um, people getting taken off to concentration camps and the way that happened and the difference, like, yeah, it was just, it was very, very good. And the ending, oh my goodness, the ending, you get a few chapters where you're in the future and you're talking about like a woman as she is older and you don't know, you don't know who it is. It doesn't say um, which, of the, which of the sisters it is. You know it's one of them. Um, and um, like I really enjoyed kind of seeing that from the future and looking at how that then interrelated back in and yeah, the ending, oh my goodness. I, I sobbed my way through the ending. <laughs> Um, but it is a book that is still, it's, it's stuck with me basically. And I, yeah, I, it was, it was, it was, a, it was, there were, I don't know quite how to say it. There were hard bits to read. Um, and yeah, it didn't gloss over like the hard truths of World War II, especially for people in Nazi occupied France. Um, but it was amazing. It really was. Definitely my standout book of February. Possibly my standout book of the year so far. Um, so yeah, I would highly, highly recommend it 100%. Um, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> um, that is all the books that I've read. So I read five books in February um and i will go on so that puts me at 11 so in the first two months of the year i'm already just over halfway through my reading goal so i suspect that 20 books may be quite easy to achieve this year i really do anyway that is my monthly roundup video for february again i'm sorry that it's coming to you so late um hopefully you will still enjoy it and we will do another one hopefully at the end of march um, which again might come a bit late because of um, shows and stuff like that, but it's still it's still a roundup of February, so I'm sure it I'm sure you don't mind. I hope. Um, right, I need to get on with some work. Thank you very much for watching, and um, I will see you again very soon. Bye. Bye.